Hi, welcome back to the Union Chronicle. Tom Wist here, your PEA president. You know, as an educator, I believe that our schools and our communities should work together. And to that end, as your president, I've been forming relationships with nonprofit like minded community groups that share the same goal of educating our kids. So today I'd like to take you on a visit to one of those. Let's go to the Global Village Museum of Arts and Cultures. All right, here we go. All right, so let's get something straight. We're not talking about this global, though this school is part of PSD and does some fantastic work and will be featured in a later Union Chronicle. No, and we're not talking about this global village. This is a state-run charter school that has nothing to do with PSD. No, we're talking about the Global Village Museum of Arts and Culture located at 200 West Mountain across from the courthouse. Let's go on in and meet Lisa Taylor. Hi, I'm here with Lisa Taylor, who is the Outreach Coordinator for the Global Village Museum of Arts and Cultures. Thank you for having me in, Lisa. Thank you for doing this, Tom. Um, what does the Global Village Museum offer that's unique in Northern Colorado? The Global Village Museum is unique in that we're the only internationally oriented museum in Colorado. But what's even more unique is that when we showcase international art and artifacts, we draw from Northern Colorado talent. Everything that we display in this museum comes from the people in Northern Colorado. So we're not bringing in people from Texas or Wyoming or Connecticut to showcase their talent. We're using the hotbed of talent that is already here. And uh, what's going on at the museum here in the coming months that you would like teachers and students to know about? Well, currently, well, let me back up. We have four uh, galleries here at the museum and a museum shop. Two of the galleries are rotating, two are permanent. Mm -hmm. One of the rotating galleries is the main gallery, which we're in now, and the current exhibit is Bring Me Back a Souvenir, Global Travelers, and Grand Memories. And what we, the criteria was international travelers in Northern Colorado that collected one item from many different countries. We're currently sitting in international furniture collected by Betty Brown. You're sitting in an elephant chair from Thailand, and I'm in a leather chair from Bolivia. And we have collections of animal figurines, fans, tea towels, menus, shot glasses, um, again, from all over the world, mm -hmm. but everything from Northern Colorado residents. Mm -hmm. And upcoming, we are having an exhibit opening November 4th that's entitled Europe Tales and Traditions. What it is going to do, it is going to showcase America's European heritage. And we're looking for community and group participation in this exhibit. We're asking community groups or school groups to come in and we're going to give them a space, uh, either a booth or a table, mm -hmm. and we're going to ask them to showcase their European country through their creativity and ingenuity whether they want to do art, artifacts, letters, uh, clothing, but anything that, so it, it's a creative project, but we're turning it over to the community to be creative. Great. And uh, we're currently seeking groups and organizations, and if you have an interest, certainly call us, 970-221-4600. We're also holding an open house for interested groups Next, coming up quickly, right? Yes, coming up next Wednesday, September 14th from 1 to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Come come over, see our space, ask us questions. Uh, if you're one person or two people, let's say from Switzerland, we're really looking more to groups. Mm -hmm. So if you could get maybe together with other people from Switzerland, and because it's, again, it's a group project. Mm -hmm. Organization. Organization, <laughs> yes. So we've got the summer souvenirs. Uh, on through October 22nd, October yes. 22nd, and then the European Heritage Roots exhibit that will be opening going November 4th through, I believe the date is February 18th. Don't hold me to that, okay. but I think it's February 18th. And um, there's rumor that the monks might be coming back in December. Can you tell us about that? We hope so. It, the tentative plan is definitely. Two years ago, the exiled Tibetan monks that are currently living in India did a sacred art tour throughout the United States to raise awareness, mm -hmm. obviously, and also to raise money. And they are coming here again. They're scheduled to be here December 12th through the 19th. They'll be creating a sand mandala in our lobby, 
which is a graphic sand painting, but it is made grain by grain over the span of about five days. And they will be uh, maybe giving some programs, maybe some demonstrations. We're still working out the schedule, but they're available for dinners, for blessing of houses, maybe blessing of sick people. Uh, but we'll be advertising all the different events, but keep your calendar open for the 12th through the 19th. Great opportunity for field trips. Yes, absolutely. So this place is just a hidden gem. It's, it's, uh, it's fascinating to come in here. It's so much bigger than it appears from the outside. It is. As I say, we have four galleries and a museum shop. Uh, the main gallery is one of our rotating galleries, as is our hall gallery. In addition to the exhibits, we also offer fabulous programs in conjunction yes. with the exhibits. Uh, so currently we had, uh, with the Bring Me Back a Souvenir, we had a program where the collectors came in and told their backstories mm -hmm. of the souvenirs. We have a program next week on baskets from around the world because there's a basket collection. And in any given exhibit, we usually have five or six programs during that six month period relating to uh, the exhibit. We also have youth activities. Uh, children can come in and do a scavenger hunt for gnomes around the museum. We have story time, free story time, the first Saturday of every month. Um, we have an international music room mm -hmm. where the instruments, the instruments that, that youth can play uh, the instruments. So we're a family museum. And I wish I had uh, a dollar for every person that had come in and said, oh, Oh my goodness, I had no idea. And from the outside, you, you, you may think that we're small. You come in, we're large, and not only are we large, but it, it's a fascinating museum. Yes. It, is. it is. It is. So uh, take some time and come down here and tour this museum. It mm -hmm. is awesome, and I really appreciate Lisa having you in here and being able to say that Pooter School, our Pooter Education Association, and this museum have a public partnership to raise awareness and to educate the kids of our community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom.